Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled. Neighbors had illegal bonfires on my property and camped on my land illegally. TLDR. Man tries twice to go on my large land with tents and friends to go camping. Both times he starts a bonfire and the first time he leaves when asked. The second time he refuses to leave and denies that it is my property until I call the police. They fine him for the illegal bonfire and tell him that I can have him arrested for trespassing and I said I would unless he leaves right then and there. He gets escorted off of my property and that neighbor will get arrested if he shows up pulling a stupid stunt again. I have what some people might consider a huge amount of land and I will admit that is true. Unlike a lot of people that have a ton of land though I don't actually use it all for farming or anything like that. My house is built on the part of the land that is a more open area while some other spots further out have more trees, and it is almost like a forest. I was worried for a long time about people not knowing it was my property and went through a process of figuring out the best way to let everyone know. Most of you are probably screaming in your heads that I should have just built a fence. I really didn't want to though because people went on morning jogs, walked their dogs, played catch with their kids. It wasn't really anywhere near my house, so I didn't mind it. Instead, I settled for signs stating that it was private property and putting them around so they couldn't really be missed. It worked out pretty well and yes people still went on my land and did things like go for runs through it without permission, but they weren't doing any harm. Heck sometimes parents would notice the signs and come to ask me if it was okay. They were there with their kids because there weren't really any safe parks for them to just run around and play. I always said yes and the only thing that I would ask of anyone was to just clean up after themselves. Many people didn't have large land and were grateful that I was lending part of mine that I wasn't using to people. I even ended up getting thank you cards in the mail and some mother even made me a lasagna once. It might seem weird where you are from but that is about 90% of the people that live in my neighborhood, we are nice and friendly and do things like that. Of course, this isn't a happy story so now that you feel all warm and fuzzy inside, I get to talk to you about my neighbor that basically leads the other 10% of people, the ones I will call the assholes. I noticed a fire near the part of my property where the tree line started and got really worried. I thought someone was smoking and dropped a cigarette or some teenagers were being stupid with a lighter. I didn't want a huge fire to break out and it looked small, so I rushed with a fire extinguisher trying to take care of it myself when it was still small. When I got there though I didn't find a forest fire, what I found was my neighbor, about five other people, tents, and a bonfire. I couldn't believe that they had the nerve to do something like this and especially without asking me. I let the small stuff slide but there was no way these people were camping on my property. Like I said before though this community is nice, so I politely point out the sign that it is my private property and don't feel comfortable with them camping on it. He makes some comment about me trying to control all of the woods as they put out the fire and pack up their things before sulking off. The funny thing is he kept grumbling about the woods the entire time while he wasn't even in any woods. He was at the clearing area, so he wasn't even at the tree line yet. I guess he wanted to camp in the woods without the actual woods. Either way I thought it was over and put it out of my mind until I saw an even bigger looking fire in about the same spot a week later. I had to assume the worst though, so I rushed over there in case there was an actual fire. Same neighbor with four friends once again with tents trying to camp. A bigger bonfire that he seemed proud of because when I looked at it, he just gave me a smug smile like I won. Everybody has their limits and honestly, I reached mine with this guy wanting to treat my land like a personal campsite. Me. I told you last week that this is my private land, and you are not welcome to camp here. Neighbor. That is a bunch of crap, and you know it. Me. Excuse me? Neighbor. You are excused and stop pretending like this whole area is your land when we all know it isn't. Anybody could put signs up saying it is their land, hell I could do that myself and it wouldn't mean anything. I see people going through and hanging out here every day in your house is far enough away that you don't notice anybody. Me. I sure noticed you in your fire. There is a law about starting a bonfire on one's property around here because of the climate. You can catch the whole land with that huge fire, and it is my land that will be destroyed. 
I am telling you to leave right now and I won't ask again. Neighbor. Good, don't ask again. Slink away back to your house and leave us in peace to camp. You are lucky that I don't call the police on you for harassing me and for putting up these fake signs. I did go back to the house, not to give up, but because he gave me an idea. I was so riled up that I couldn't think straight and probably wouldn't have thought of calling the police until the next day when I calmed down. Instead, I called them about the group trespassing on my land, refusing to leave, and setting a potentially dangerous fire. That last part grabbed their attention right away and told me that they would be right over to talk to them and get them off the land. So, I kept a far enough eye on them to not get into another argument until the police arrived and I brought them over to where neighbor and his friends were. Neighbor didn't take it well and started yelling how I was trying to control all of the woods and that I should be arrested for falsely calling the police. They didn't like his attitude and slowly explained to him that not only was I correct in saying that it was my property, but that the bonfire they started was against the law as well. He basically told them that they had two options they could do right now. Either way neighbor was getting a fine for the bonfire, which by now his friends put out. As for trespassing I told the police officers that I was willing to not press charges if he left my property with all of his belongings and never came back. I can hear the booze now for me not getting him arrested, but I just can't be spiteful and really, I just wanted him gone and out of my mind. The later options were obviously chosen as the police escorted all five of them off of my property with their tents. The police recommended a fence if I really wanted to keep people out, but I still can't bring myself to do that. Not only the cost of offense that large, but also because I don't want to punish the 90% of good people for the 10% of jerks. It brings me joy when I'm outside and can see a man with his dog jogging in the distance or a dad trying to teach his son how to hit a ball off one of those standing tees. Good people doing wholesome things for me makes up for one idiot trying to burn down my entire land and act like he was some wilderness explorer. The next story is titled. Am I the asshole for not letting my husband pay for a shed to be put on my property? When my husband G, 29 M male, and I, 31 female, were still dating my cousin died and I came into a large inheritance. It was enough to pay off my student loans, get a newer car, invest into some stocks, and I still had of money left. I decided to fulfill my dream of owning acreage for a peaceful getaway from the city. I ended up finding a gorgeous 60 plus acre plot of land for a very reasonable price within two hours of where we live and best of all it had a little house on it. We ended up moving in while we were still dating. The house needed a lot of work, so I hired professionals to do most of the remodeling, rewiring the house, replacing the roof, updating the pluming, etc. And then me and G did the easier tasks, replacing the flooring, painting, replacing broken windows, etc. to save money. I paid for all the materials to remodel the house and never charged him any kind of rent to compensate him for his time, which allowed him to use the extra money to pay off some of his debts and put some money away. It took about a year, but we got it done and the house was and is adorable. We have been married for a couple of years and yesterday he was talking about how he wants to have a storage shed built on the property because I am pregnant and the room we used for storage is going to be the nursery. I encouraged him to rent a storage unit instead but he did not like the idea because in the long run it would be cheaper to invest in a storage shed and just take the money out of our joint account. I then offered to pay for it out of my personal account, which has the leftover inheritance money. We contacted a local professional and started the process of having it built. Then a few days ago, he asks me why I insisted my money was used to pay for it. I said that it was my house, and he should not have to pay out of his pocket to maintain it. He retorted saying that it was our house, he helped remodel it, he has lived in it for more than four years, and we will be raising our child in this house. I reminded him that I bought the house, paid for all the work to be done, and I pay the property taxes. He then got mad and said something like, so I don't get to have a home that is mine. I thought on what he said for a moment and reminded him that he came into this marriage with a large savings account and told him that it would be enough to pay for a down payment and said he could get a mortgage, rent it out, and let the tenants pay it off so he would have a house if we divorced. This seemed to piss him off more because he went into another room, and he is still ignoring me. Then I got a call from my father-in-law, and he told me that he spoke with G about the situation and said that I was in the wrong and that all property between a man and wife is shared and dividing things into his and hers is harmful. Then today, I spoke to my brother about it, and he thinks I am, putting my assets above my husband. So Reddit, am I the asshole?
We both signed a prenup before we got married. Also, he was compensated for his labor and time. The money he has, that I suggested he invest in a house, was saved before our marriage because he lived with me, and I paid all the bills. I live in a community property state. If he contributes anything to the property financially, he has a right to it if we divorced regardless of the prenup. Okay, so I want to thank everyone for their responses. It was very helpful to see so many different viewpoints on my predicament. I had a heart to heart with my husband and we both discussed our feelings on the matter. I reminded him that unlike me, he grew up in a stable, financially comfortable home and I explained that my motivations did not come from a lack of love for him but anxiety from mother and my financial struggles after my parents divorced. He said that although he knows that it was important to me to legally be the owner of the house, our conversation about the shed left him feeling like he has no control over our family home and like he is a temporary guest instead of my husband. Ultimately, after talking it out, we agreed that the best course of action is to purchase a second home together with our joint funds and make that our primary residence. My house and land will be used as a weekend getaway instead of our primary residence. While I am a little sad that I will spend less time in on my property, I am very happy that we found a compromise which allows me to protect my assets and gives him more of a feeling of connection and equal ownership to our marital home. The next story is titled. Entitled neighbor doesn't like that we parked near his car. Maybe more annoying than entitled, but here's the story. Came home from a long day out yesterday. Parked our car on the street and got settled into the couch ready to watch a movie and relax with my wife and dog. Doorbell rings all of a sudden. Not once, but four to five times like there's some kind of emergency. This sets my dog off since she does not like the doorbell. Even when it's coming from something we are watching. I'm a bit annoyed at that since but think maybe there's something wrong. Answer the door and it's the neighbor from a couple houses down. He tells me that my car is parked right on his car and wants me to move it. I say, sure, let me grab my keys and come take a look. We were parked in front of this house, but everyone around here does that. It's not a situation or location where people are expected to only park in front of their own home. Thought that maybe my car was bumped up against his and I missed it since it wasn't a big parking spot. Get to the car ready to move it. Guy is standing in front of his door watching me to make sure I move my car. This annoys me a bit so before I move my car, I take a closer look. My car is about 3 inches from his. Close, but not touching his car. If I move my car up, it would basically be front bumper to back bumper with the car that is parked in front. There's also some room between the neighbor's car and the one behind his car. I let him know I'm not moving my car since there's not much space, but he's free to move his say good night and walk back home this guy does really like his car as i see him washing and cleaning it all the time nothing wrong with that but it's a public street that everyone uses for parking if you're that worried about cars parking close there's a small parking lot by a playground around the corner that's usually half empty overnight use that instead the next story is titled sometimes it just works out one day at my old hotel a mr jacobs came to check in he was an elderly man with a walker. He was very sweet but explained that he booked his hotel room last minute and really needed an accessible room with a roll-in shower. Most of our rooms had a tub-slash-shower combo and he wouldn't be able to lift his leg to get into the tub. He had to book last minute due to family emergency and only standard rooms were available. I double-checked the inventory and yes, all accessible rooms were either rented or had been reserved for today. I started checking the arrivals list maybe one of our regulars had booked an accessible by mistake, it happens, and would switch to a standard, but only one reservation had booked an accessible room and it was through a third party so there was no way to tell if that person really needed it or not. I was about to explain to Mr. Jacobs that we just didn't have any accessible rooms available when I overheard my coworker greet and begin to check in a couple that walked up. The gardeners were the third party reserved in. I quickly excused myself from my station and dashed over to my coworker. I interrupted and asked if the couple needed an accessible room or if they would prefer a standard king with a standard bathroom. The gardener seems confused. The third party site didn't specify to them what kind of room they were getting, but they didn't need a roll in shower room. I quickly told my coworker to switch their room with Mr. Jacobs' room. I went back to Mr. Jacobs and explained what was happening and he walked over to the gardeners and gave them a hug. Somehow serendipity was on our side, and everyone got the room they wanted. Mr. Jacobs was very grateful, and we got a glowing review online. 
The last story is titled, Frivolous Litigant and Asshole Neighbor Picked the Wrong Neighbor to Sue. Loses $30,000 in the process. The best pro-revenge I ever saw was against a psycho neighbor. Let's call them Fig Jam, which stands for, Fuck I'm Good, Just Ask Me. Fig Jam was one of those dickheads that would move to a new house, pick fights with neighbors on all sides, move, rinse and repeat. Because in their eyes, everyone except themselves were the problem. To give an idea of how big a piece of shit Fig Jam and his wife Cunt Boats was, after 10 years of stirring up trouble with every neighbor they could find they decided to move out to a new home. But they had one last douchebag move to pull off as a parting gift. When they were packing up their house, Fig Jam dropped their birdbath, breaking it to pieces. Rather than suck it up like a normal person, they instead called the police and said my father had gone over in the middle of the night, with a balaclava and broke their birdbath for no reason. The police came we explained our piece and the police went on their merry way. This happened constantly for over 10 years. They were just a massive piece of shit in general. Well one day their neighbor, Jim, over their back fence got a bizarre legal document stating their intent to sue over a tree in their yard whose roots had supposedly moved 20 meters down the hill to restrict and break their pool pump and the piping for said pump. So, Jim in his defense pulls in a plumber, who happened to be a mate, to dig up the trench and extract said roots for DNA testing in a lab. When they did this, they spared no expense. We're talking 15 people on site, we're talking bobcats, the ducking works to make it the most expensive trench they could. Funnily enough, the DNA tests proved it was from Fig Jam's own tree, which was a lot closer to their pole pump, who'd have thought it? When they lost the case, they were liable for cost of their gym's legal defense and all activities taken to clear his name. The plumber and the lab hit Fig Jam with a $30,000 bill. For their services. I couldn't have happened to a nicer person. Bravo Jim. Thank you for listening.